sermon is based on our text from Matthew. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, most of you are probably already prepared for Christmas. The lights have been up over on West Timer near the Galleria for several weeks already. Maybe you've already put up the lights at your own home, put up the tree, decorated it, put up the wreath on the door. No doubt many of you are playing Christmas tunes on your car radio stations. Maybe you're happy that the peppermint mocha is back on the Starbucks menu. Done most of your shopping. You're ready. You are prepared for the big day. So maybe the gospel reading sounds like a bit of a shock to you. Like it doesn't really belong here. Doesn't give you warm and fuzzy feelings. Doesn't really sound like Christmas Day. That's because it's not. John the Baptist belongs in Advent, not on Christmas Day. I don't think any of you have a little John the Baptist figurine for your nativity sets. I've never received a Christmas card that says repent instead of Merry Christmas. John the Baptist comes to us here, now in Advent, before Christmas, because his purpose is to prepare us for Christmas. So while we're preparing for Christmas by setting up the tree, <coughs> sipping our peppermint mochas, John the Baptist is preparing for Christmas by preaching a simple message in the wilderness. Repent. Repent is the word that breaks the silence. Silence because there hasn't been a prophet here in Israel for hundreds of years, and now here comes John the Baptist on the scene. His purpose is to prepare people for the coming Messiah. Listen again to what Isaiah says of him. He calls him a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. And here he is, 700 years later, John the Baptist comes, this wild looking man, dressed in camel's hair, a leather belt, eating bugs and honey, calling out judgment, driving people to repentance, preparing them for the coming Messiah. And I want you to notice the way in which John does this preparation, especially the way in which he speaks. He speaks boldly and without apology. So for instance, whenever the Pharisees and Sadducees, hypocritical Jews, come to him, to his baptism, he doesn't say, uh, excuse me, Pharisees, but I, I think you've misplaced your hope in being sons of Abraham. No, he says, you brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. He slams them with the truth. He doesn't really care if the Pharisees are going to hate him for what he says. He stands by the truth of God's law. This brutal honesty is a large part of the preparation that takes place here in Advent. <coughs> Speaking the truth of God's law, especially the parts that make us uncomfortable or embarrassed. Because that's what the law does, it brings our sin to light, especially the parts we don't want other people to see. So what would John the Baptist say to you to prepare you for this Christmas? Maybe he wouldn't call you a brood of vipers, but you act like it sometimes. Watch yourself. So that
so that the pride and the hypocrisy of the Pharisees doesn't grow within you. And maybe you do notice yourself sometimes calling out everyone else's sins, never looking at yourself, thanking God that you're not as sinful as everyone else around you. You look in the mirror and you swell with pride, congratulating yourself on how much money you have, on how good you are at life, how much better at your work you are than everyone else, hoping everyone else sees how great you really are. And when you're not thinking about yourself, when you're not looking at yourself, you're unhappily looking at other people, coveting what they have, coveting the neighbor's nice new car that they got for Christmas. Coveting the mansion down the street. Coveting the seemingly perfect life that those people live. Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Prepare yourself this advent by ripping those things out of your heart. Tear out the pride. Tear out the hypocrisy. Tear out the covetousness. This is the message of John. He speaks it without apology. John is serious about sin because God is serious about sin, about your sin. Our culture often likes to picture Jesus as a buddy-buddy kind of guy, but John gives us a very different picture in today's gospel. He gives us Jesus the judge saying, his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor. He will gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. God comes in judgment and wrath on the last day, and what happens to sinners? They are burned in the unquenchable fires of hell. John prepares us for Christmas by showing us our sin. But he also prepares us for Christmas by showing us our Savior. Because he knows who is the one who can rescue us from those unquenchable fires of hell. So when John first sees Jesus coming to him, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John knows that this man is going to be the one who will take away your sin. The one whose sacrifice will save us from the wrath to come. So yes, John is brutally honest about your sin, but he's also brutally honest about your Savior. He doesn't show you your sin without showing you your Savior. He doesn't give you the law without giving you the gospel. There is no Advent without Christmas. And this is the point of Christmas. That Jesus came to die for sinners like you. That that little baby born in Bethlehem, has come to storm Satan's kingdom. And yes, even though you do act like the brood of vipers at times, Jesus comes to crush the head of the viper, Satan, freeing you from his death grip. And when he storms Satan's kingdom, he smashes every chain of sin. He breaks the lock of death to set the captives free, to set you free. There is no prison too fortified. There is no chain too strong to keep you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And you are free. Free from your sins of hypocrisy. Free from your sins of pride. Free from your sins of covetousness. Free because you are forgiven.
And as a free child of God, you can say, bring on the winnowing fork. Bring on the axe. Bring on the last day. Because you have already been saved from that path. Jesus has already plucked you out of the jaws of hell. So you don't need to be afraid of judgment because you have been baptized into Christ. Where he goes, you go. Which means, on that last day, you will enter into the kingdom of the Father prepared for you before the world's foundation. So as Christmas draws near, go ahead, set up your Christmas trees, drink your peppermint mochas, but spend some time now in Advent preparing with John the Baptist. Let his voice ring in your ear, calling you to repentance, yes, but especially calling you to your Savior calling you to the cross of Christ, where the blood of the Lamb takes away the sin of the world. Amen.